study, 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 study the King's Gambit. You can watch these videos for relaxation or for education or for both. And you can watch them in any order. I have actually made another video on the King's Gambit on my quest to understand the King's Gambit. That one was about the most prominent and best King's Gambit player in history, Boris Spassky. But now we go back, folks. We go all the way back to the first time the King's Gambit was played, at least the first time it was written down what the game had been. I'm going to look at uh, three games. Uh, and the the oldest ones are from 1620, so uh, uh, 403 years ago. 403 years ago, somebody sat down at a chessboard. Probably the chessboard looked different from this, but it still had the same amount of squares and the same amount of pieces. Pieces probably looked different, probably they did. But um, but it was the same game, and they were, people were probably also wearing different garments, different clothing from what we would wear today. They would speak differently, but they would be humans like us nonetheless, even though they are separated from us by four hundred and three years. The first game is by Giochino Gareco versus an unknown opponent. This this game is nine moves long. So I have the computer here. I have not studied these games. I have not run them through the computer. I'm just just dipping my toe in the king's game bit. It's a, it's an opening I want to take up seriously at some point and I'm going in there, I'm studying the history, I'm looking at the earliest games, I'm looking at the most proficient players, and I am slowly building my understanding of this opening, and I invite you, you my friend, to enjoy the journey with me. The King's Gambit starts E4, E5, and F. Indeed, that is also what we see in this game. Then we have the king's game bit accepted with e takes. Today, that is considered sort of the antidote. That is the recommended move. Bishop c4. So we are giving up this pawn to gain speedy development. Um, also, this queen can come in, and we are looking at f7. Always a lot of tricks on f7 um, in the king's game bits. Aha, uh -huh, we see queen, queen check. Uh, usually, this is not recommended, these early queen excursions. But in the king's game bit, it is often absolutely okay. Um, here the king goes to f1. And it looks like it's a huge advantage for black, because we have an extra pawn as black. King can't, white can't castle anymore. But, 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 but. Um, it's not as simple. King f1. And black continues developing. Bishop c5. This is threatening checkmate. Looks like it's going very well. Um, but uh, but we have d4 here. And that's backed up by the queen. And sort of exposing this bishop c5 move as perhaps a little superficial. Now I would guess bishop b6. It is the move. And then knight f3. So we can see how we uh, we gain all this tempo because now 
we are attacking the queen. The queen will have to move. So it stays in the fray. This looks like it falls to an easy tactic that I will just confirm. Yes. So I actually was able to spot this tactic. These players, uh, they played uh, they played 400 years ago and only uh, only Greco was really a master. He was probably the only really strong chess player in the world uh, at that point. Uh, bishop takes f7, check. King takes f7. Probably that's not even best. Probably you should just move the king and accept that your position is so bad. But this is the move in the game. And then knight here, that knight to e5, that's check to the king and madame to the queen and this this is how the game ends and black resigned so let's put up the pieces again and go to a different different game from the same player this game is twice as long e4 e5 f4 this is what we want to see this is the king's game bit this is what we like and how will greco with the white pieces deal with it in this this time around so we do have an accepted again it's nice that we see some examples of this because i imagine i'm going to run into quite a few quite a few uh, king's game bit accepted and we do still see bishop c4 it's the same thing here, queen check, king f1, so this is sort of a, our main line, our Greco main line, and curiously we have the same thing, bishop c5, d4, bishop back, knight f3, and here in the first game we saw queen g4, which lost, so let's see if there is an improvement. Yes, we see the improvement. Queen back. This is actually really, really cool because when you see Magnus Carlsen play an opening, that opening has been developed. Like when he plays the Roy Lopez, that's named after a guy um, in like 1560. I think we'll actually have a game of his in this compilation here as well and invented like 400 years ago and then improved upon and fine-tuned and improved upon and by studying the history like with these early games we start we see the very start of this um development of the opening and the theory and the improvements so will we see bishop takes uh, here no we just recapture this pawn so bishop takes f4 we have a couple of strong bishops we have regained our pawn we have extremely nice position in all ways actually except our king safety is maybe a little dubious but these two pawns these bishops this queen this knight just a uh, beautiful and i we see queen takes an e4 I would have thought that didn't work because bishop takes on f7 that is also the move but but the king doesn't capture that because if king captures that then we see knight check and are picking up the queen so the unknown, op unknown opponent did learn about this trick and said ah it's okay i'm just going to play here your king is bad as well and I won a central pawn. Okay. The bishop is attacked. It drops back. The knight goes to h6 to attack the bishop. Uh, that is ignored because knight c3 attacks the most, the more, uh, the more important piece, the queen. So the queen has to move goes back now this bishop really is in trouble it goes back all the way to b3 
and c6 preparing uh -huh. so this is the positional thing that's going on here is that the blacks black pieces here on the queen side they have a hard time coming out because we can't just play d5 so we play c6 in order to play d5 okay queen queen d3 allowing rook here rook e1 attacking the queen we do see d5 so one small thing is accomplished for black but the rook comes in attacking the queen queen f7 it looks like we're just about ready to cr crash through queen, uh, bishop d6 check king moves and we are just infiltrating so what I'm learning from this game uh, besides uh, some memorization of the patterns and how the first part of the opening goes is that what I want to do is I want to be notice that what can happen is that black can be behind in development because they can't advance their pawns in a way quickly that allows their pieces to spring to life and I can use that momentum to infiltrate with my pieces and this looks absolutely crushing so queen f6 and just a little sacrifice here because we have much like so many more active pieces we can just sacrifice it's not a problem because these pieces will never Probably this one also never really joined the game, so we are ahead in material in a way. Knight takes pawn, bishop takes pawn, bishop takes, I guess, because it's check. No, okay, because that would be, that would end in checkmate. Um, so actually, so actually, after knight takes, we see a more ambitious try. We see queen takes bishop but this looks like we are going to have a horrible discovered check like this double check and king here and mate yep that's exactly how this game ends that is actually quite a beautiful checkmate i must say okay yeah it's very satisfying to to watch these historic Let's do, uh, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Okay, we have another one from Greco before we go to the last one from uh, Rui Lopez, who also played the King's Gambit, even though he, well, even though the most, maybe the most famous opening in chess, the Rui Lopez, the Spanish, is named after him. Uh, but let's first look at this e4 e5 f4 now this is against uh, greco against i guess one of his students and we have the student is trying something different um, so we so we still see the king's game but accepted we see the bishop c4 line we see queen check on h4 we see king f1 all of this been tried by black before but we need a new improvement because um, bishop bishop c5 seems to just fall to d4 so what is the improvement it's just d6 okay opening up this bishop here um, it looks like a fairly decent move. Knight f3. This is all the same ideas that we have already been looking at. Um, but but now after d6, the, we can actually pin this knight. So we are not going getting anywhere with sacrifices on f7 now. 
I guess we could maybe just capture the queen, but then they would capture our queen and our we are down a pawn, so we don't want to head towards an end game. We want to have our attacking chances. So what did Greco play? He played d4. Establishing this very nice control makes a lot of sense. And uh, and the queen just dropped back to f6. Now black may be thinking about bishop takes knight, queen takes and queen takes pawn. And then bishop takes knight, we have to answer with pawn takes bishop. And then maybe uh, there will be, maybe the king here will be missing his defensive structure a little bit. Um, we're not seeing any of that because Greco pushes e5, aggressive as always, uh, but that is why you would play the king's gambit, it's an aggressive opening. And we don't see pawn takes, I guess pawn takes and then pawn takes, we're still under attack and now this queen is looking at dangerous squares towards the king, so that is why queen h6 is played, this also defends the pawn. But it looks like we are again as white gaining that momentum, gaining the fluidity of our pieces that we really like in the king's gambit. And we attack the pinned piece. I like this move. Pawn to g3. This pawn is pinned to the queen. So even though it looks very unsafe for our king, we're just saying, no, no, you only have two pieces developed. You have no real control over the center. Um, so I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. And I would be afraid below it because it's it's very good for me to learn about this because this queen check on h3, king f2, I would guess that's forced. And then pawn takes pawn, that is check. We recapture. Now that exposes an attack on the queen. The queen is trapped, so therefore we have as black to play bishop takes knight. Then we lose if we play rook takes queen, because we lose our queen, so we play queen takes. And now the queen is no longer trapped. The queen here is still protecting the rook, but the queen can escape all the way back here. But a lot of stuff happened there, because we are not only threatening the queen here, we are also threatening something takes on f7, which would pretty quickly result in checkmate, so the queen has to be all the way back to defend f7. And even more stuff is happening, because of course this queen is also attacking on b7. So, wow, we are looking at the rook, potential attacks against the king on this diagonal, and this is one of these situations, because queen f6 here, is this one of these situations where I can just play this? Because I know in the England gambit, I'll show that after this video, in the England gambit, there is this exact configuration of uh, rook protects knight, knight protects queen, queen protects rook, and it's look, it looks very nice, right? It looks like a very elegant, uh, way of like having a little circle of protection, circle of protection black if you play Magic the Gathering or circle of protection white, but uh, but in the England game, but it just falls to an idea like this. So let's yes, exactly, yeah, it just falls like this, and uh, and the queen is you can't like you can't capture here pinned to the king, so you're going to lose. So that was a very nice game. I'm having a really great time. I hope you I hope you like this video because I would like to do more of these. You know, it's just uh, it's very nice just studying chess in a very sort of relaxed manner. I'll just show the England game bit. I think I have shown it in an old video also. It's not a it's not a good opening, uh, but you can you can win a lot of games uh, 
until we, we reach a certain level and then you want to stop playing it because it'll give you some bad habits because it's it's a trick opening uh, it's it's not um, it's not sound but what it is you play this with black the England gambit is pawn to d4 then you play pawn to e5 this is of course ludicrous uh, it does not the rapper but the word <laughs> and um, it, black cannot be allowed to, to do this white has to take so black attacks the the pawn defend attacks with the queen defends all of this is perfect for white white has a very significant advantage here and then there's the trick queen check here attacking on b2 attacking the bishop so um, you have to play bishop back here um, in order to uh, to not lose the bishop then black captures here and then here's the trick that is it looks very much like uh, what we saw in the, that other game a lot of times white is doing absolutely fine here you just have to play knight uh, knight f3 and then after uh, knight c3 and then after knight um, b4 attacking here you have to defend like this and you are basically winning um, but you will see the mistake and it's sort of the same circle of protection here rook protects knight knight protects bishop bishop protects rook it looks so nice but then here's the shocker bishop b4 pinning this bishop so now you can't capture the queen because it's pinned to the king and here's it's just the what happens quite often is people will say okay but then i'll just protect my bishop with my queen and then you can win the game very quickly bishop takes bishop queen takes and queen c1 checkmate so yeah it's a dirty way to win but it's fun you know i i, I guess every chess player has to go through a phase where they play that um, until it doesn't work anymore but it is not a sound opening it will give you bad habits if you if you play it for too long okay let's go to the Rui Lopez game so this is played later this is played in 1560 between Rui Lopez de Segura versus Giovanni Leonardo di Bona de Tacutri and I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of of those names uh, it was played in Rome uh, at the papal papal states exhibitions so some sort of exhibition was going on that had something to do with the pape with the pope with the pape i don't know uh, and i know that uh, roy lopez was uh had sort of an honorary title of royal bishop of spain and he was sort of um a showpiece because he was the best chess player in the world so the king of spain basically employed him and he had this title of royal bishop but his real job was just to to be the best chess player in the world and be spanish so he was sort of uh, yeah a propaganda a propaganda pawn for the spanish king and uh, probably the king was showing off his chess master in this papal exhibition in 1560 doesn't it blow your mind is it just me that we can get to study in detail decisions made by people 400 years ago it's not that we can sort of have a broad okay this king started this war because he wanted the whatever resource in this country or the or like we can we they played chess with the same goal as we do with the same rules as we do so we can understand their thought process we can get into the head of people 
400 years ago. It's, I don't know. To me, that is just... It's one of the most beautiful things about chess. E4, E5, F4. The king's game, but will we see a king's game, but except it? No. So now there is a new improvement. So they... So uh, Leonardo, Giovanni Leonardo, with the with the black pieces here had studied the Greco games and said, nah, I'm not, I am not accepting this game, but that is too dangerous. So this is the king's game, but declined. Roy Lopez played bishop c4, common theme, seen this on move, three in all of the games so far. c6, preparing it's interesting that this pawn is not captured at all, preparing d5, but knight f3, threatening to capture on e5, this looks like something will happen on f7 very quickly, bishop to g4. In general, that has seemed to be a mistake in the games I've looked at so far. Yes, we try to go for f7, pawn takes. Pawn takes, I guess, yes. And bishop takes f7, check. King takes. And I am very sure we will see knight takes e5, check. Also attacking the bishop, but also actually the queen is now attacking the bishop. Very common theme. King goes back to e8. Queen takes bishop. Looks like complete disaster for black. This bishop g4 just did not work. Knight f6 attacking the queen, but we will get in queen e6 check queen e7 only move and i guess i don't know if there is a checkmate or something but just queen queen c8 check queen back only move queen takes queen king takes queen knight f7 check and winning the rook should be more than enough to to win so we do see here we do see this we do see all of this here, here, we see exactly all of this, queen tank here, and knight f7, check to the king, and picking up the rook, and uh, black resigned, because let's say you play some move with the king, capture the rook, you can capture this pawn with, with the knight, but now you have no more threats and the material situation let's just cancel out we have both lost a queen that cancels out both lost a bishop that cancels out black has lost three pawns white has lost only two so there is a deficit of one pawn for black and also a deficit of a full rook. So a pawn and a rook worth six points is too much, even even in 1560. So that was the fourth King's Gambit game. And I hope that you had a wonderful time listening to this video. I want to say thank you to Ivan. And you have to tell me if that's I'm pronouncing pronouncing your name correctly uh, f f who also suggested like actually this particular game which got me into the idea of making this video because Ivan is a supporter of mine on Patreon, Patreon and they uh, they were hanging out we were just all hanging out all the patrons and me on the discord and sharing games and talking chess you know and um, they suggested this game so thank you for that and by the way, if, if you want to come and hang out, you know, there's no tears in the, in my Patreon. So you don't have to, 
you know, like everybody who supports anything gets access to to the ASMR chess uh, Discord. And of course, it helps me out a lot uh, in my quest to become a full-time professional YouTuber. Uh, but if if you don't have the money, or if you don't just can't be bothered, or if that's just not your thing, just keep watching the videos. They are free, and they will be that forever. Thanks for watching. I hope I will see you in the next video.